Calling all cars. A copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 236. Cooperate with the narcotic squad. That's all. Rose and Quest. Prevention of crime is a major activity in our modern law enforcement system. It is more important than the apprehension and punishment of the criminal. Up to the minute, lubrication is firmly grounded on the same principle. You can wait until the crime has been committed, until your motor has broken down with a low-browed oil contributing to its delinquency, or you can completely change its environment, making it impossible for your car to go wrong by protecting it with real lube. And when I say protection, friends, I mean just this. Real lube covers every vital moving part with a bulletproof vest, so to speak. So impenetrable that the machine gun fire of your top speed, plus the heat barrage of the hottest weather, cannot dent its arm. It's the way real lube is made, friends, that makes it such a superior motor oil. It is tempered, refined, and purified in the largest, most modern scientific refinery in America. Before it's sent on its way to the Rio Grande station in your neighborhood, Rio Lube leaves behind all sludge, carbon-forming elements, and other impurities which are allowed to remain in varying degrees in many of the so-called good motor oils. When you drive into your Rio Grande dealers and order a refill of Rio Lube at only 25 cents a quart, no more, mind you, you get the newest and finest motor oil in the West. We are privileged tonight to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Occasionally a case breaks on which it is necessary for an officer to work without the knowledge of the members of his own department. He even has to leave the matter of making arrests to other persons in order that he may be left free to work out the more intricate details of the case. Tonight's story is that kind of case. This is a story of how operatives of the narcotics squad working completely in the dark, uncovered the source of supply of dope that had been eluding police for months. There is no more insidious traffic in the world than the drug traffic. It is one of the hardest of all crimes to combat or to control. And the control of the drug traffic is one of the most dangerous of law enforcement jobs. However, tonight, we shall not try to paint heroes, but we shall simply tell a story. I will have more to say about the case at the end of the program. <laughs> In one of the residential sections of the city, two members of the narcotics squad of the Los Angeles Police Department stand watching a house. Impatiently, they wait for a woman to leave the doorway across the street. What's going on in there, Eddie? She's been gone for over an hour. Uh, Be patient, Pat. (laughs) Patience is a virtue. Yeah, I wish you'd explain that to my corns. If what you said about that guy is on the level, we ought to... Ah, quit worrying. Madge will take care of herself. I know that, but suppose he tries to... He won't. He's not a fool. Well, I was only thinking that she comes. You can stop thinking now. And she seems to be all right. Oh, of course she's all right. Come on, let's go. She'll drive around the block and pick us up on Lost Palmer Street, if the coast is clear. All right. Uh, say, Eddie, you know, I've been thinking. What, again? Uh, no, it's the same think. But, but I didn't get a chance to finish it. Suppose this uh, Dr. So-and-so does what you expect him to do. Now, what does that make us uh, or him? It makes us conscious we're on the right trail. Eventually, may make him occupy a little stone room with only one window instead of that palatial house. <laughs> and wear a suit with stripes running around and around instead of up and down, eh? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, here's Las Palmas Street. You'll turn this corner. And there's nobody in sight. As far as we can see, at any rate, we'll hope for the best. You know, the boys connected with this business have very nervous fingers. They shoot first and talk afterwards. Well, maybe we'd better just uh, skip it. I'm enjoying a pretty good constitution, and I'd like to go on enjoying a little while longer. Here comes Matt. We'll talk the matter over. I I still have a very fine regard for my constitution. I I think sort of well of it. Taxi, Captain? Yes, don't mind if I do. May I bring my friend? By all means. Three can ride as cheaply as two. Well, now, this is an honor I never expected. Get in and express your appreciation by a big chunk of silence and close the door. Well, how's the neurosis? Oh, it's just dandy. But that isn't the half of it. If I 
could remember all the big words, you'd be surprised to discover the sort of person that I am. Oh, spots before the eyes, I suppose, and a ringing noise in the head. You know, I had an uncle in Ireland that used to see spots in front of his eyes, and I remember my mother telling me Never that... Never mind the symptoms, Pat. Go ahead, Madge. What did he recommend? He gave me a prescription and a few pills. He brought me a glass of water and told me to take one of the pills there. You didn't, did you? No, boy, I switched it in a hurry. Here's the prescription. What is it? Something to calm Miss Blackwell's neurosis if she can't sleep at night. Oh, well, so this would calm most anything. Well, Dr. Bruce, you finally made a mistake. A prominent citizen known for his civic interest, addresses a public gathering denouncing the traffic in drugs and pledging his full cooperation to eradicate the evil. And I say to you, gentlemen, a condition exists in this city that should not be tolerated under any civilization. A nauseous serpent of inconceivable destruction is creeping into our homes, our high schools, our universities. And gentlemen, with your help, I'm going to stamp it out. My duty to the community demands that I exercise constant vigilance in the control of the world's most ferocious evil. And that evil, friends, is the traffic in dope. Poison. We've handled it with kid gloves. We've been afraid to face it because it isn't nice. Because we don't like to think it's a reality. But it is. And you can depend upon me as president of this league to do my duty, yes and more than my duty, to forever smash these vicious criminals who contribute to the cause of human demoralization. Thank you. Well, Brisson, that was a great speech. You're a man after my own heart. Uh, thank you, Captain Chitwood. I feel the time has come when everyone must take up arms against such villainy. You're absolutely right. And speaking for my official capacity, I want you to know you can depend upon every cooperation from the police department. Tommy, lock the door. Okay, Squint. Afraid somebody's coming in, Squint? Not especially. I just want to be sure the wrong guy don't get out. What's your idea of a wrong guy? Oh, anybody that might like to do a little business with the cops, for example. I see. Somebody been double-crossing you, Squint? Yeah, somebody's been trying to double-cross me. Who is it, do you know? I don't know who he is, but the guy looks an awful lot like you. Like me? That's bad, isn't it? Yeah, that's too bad. Well, are you ready? Ready? Sure. Okay. Somebody tipped the cops we was going to move some stuff tonight. They got the tip yesterday at 2 o'clock, and at that time, there was only three guys that knew about it. Buddy, myself, and you. You think that I'm the guy? I don't have to think. I got the tip right back. Buddy hadn't been out of my sight. The guy that tipped me the tip off described you. Now, what do you think? I think there's only one thing to do. Get him! Yeah. That's how we handle coppers. The faster they tip, the faster they get tipped. With the right guy in the right spot, Tommy, we can't lose. Now listen, pay attention, you two. A single misstep is liable to be very hard on the Constitution. Dr. Bruce must have some way of turning his patients over to a regular dope peddler when he thinks they're ready. And that's the first step. Say, Eddie, what I can't understand is, uh, how do you know all this about this doctor guy? Maybe he's on the level. Oh, rats. Madge is as perfect a specimen of physical health as anyone I've ever seen. See here, Captain. I object to being called a specimen. <laughs> all right. An example. Well, an example is better. Yeah, a first-year medical student would have pronounced you perfect. Besides that, only a short time ago, a prominent man in this city brought charges against Bruce, claiming the doctor had given his wife dope. What did they do about it? Well, Dr. Bruce swore it was a frame-up. He only prescribed what he considered necessary. And then the case was suddenly and uh, mysteriously dropped. Then you think he'll find some way of sending me to an ordinary dope peddler after a while, and he'll be the man we'll get. Oh, no. He'll be the man we'll leave strictly alone until he leads us to the top of the ladder, the brains behind this dope ring who, for all we know, may be none other than Dr. Bruce himself. Uh, you know, the more I think of this, Eddie, the more I think it'd be an awfully good idea to just skip it. Uh -huh, that's just the trouble. Too many people are doing that already. Now, Madge... I don't suppose he has the faintest suspicion you're not Beth Blackwell. Oh, no, I'm sure he hasn't. He's questioned me about my family, Beth's family, that is. But I know more about her relatives than she does, so he's quite satisfied. Well, that's good. Of course, it would be fatal to our plans if he discovered who you really are. Oh, I don't suppose it would do little Madge any good. No, miss, it might be hard on the Constitution. <laughs> All kinds 
pieces of news, Eddie. I discovered where and how to get the dope. Good. Where? At a nightclub called the 810 Club. How'd you find out? Well, two patients in Bruce's office were talking. They spoke in whispers, but deliberately loud enough for me to hear. Men or women? Women. They get it from a perfume vendor in the ladies' dressing room. Fine. Looks like our next stop is the 810 Club. <laughs> change, sir. Well, thank you. There you are. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, enjoy the dinner, Madge? Yes. But let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. Where'd we park, you remember, Madge? Yes, right around the corner. Oh, that's right, we did. Well? Well, Captain, here's your deck, as they call it. You want a little bite of it now, or will you wait till you get home? Uh, just keep it for a souvenir. Hold it until we get in the car. Whoever thought of that appliance used a certain amount of misguided intelligence. It's just what the doctor ordered, without the formality of a doctor's prescription. How's it operate? The perfume dispenser is on the wall, which I would say is between the dressing room and the kitchen. A sign is pasted on it, which reads, out of order. <laughs> An ironical comparison, ma'am. But all you have to do is drop a $5 bill down a little slot on top of the machine. Then put a dime in the regular coin slot, and lo and behold, the out-of-order machine works. And I can imagine they can see you, but of course you can't see who's operating the machine. That's mm-hmm. it, exactly. Uh, here's the car. Well, may I have the pleasure of driving you home, Miss Serber? You may have the pleasure of driving me, but if there's going to be any excitement, you're certainly not going to drive me home. (laughs) There'll be no more excitement tonight. I don't think it'd do us any good to go back there and locate the passage to the wall behind that machine. We wouldn't find anybody, and we'd only get ourselves shot if they saw us. Of course, the real proof of the matter is that the little bottles containing the heroin are not in the machine. Those bottles contain ordinary perfume. The man who gets the five pushes out the famous deck... After you put in the dime and turn the handle. Well, then what's the dime for? I don't know. Overhead, probably. Well, it's a smart idea. But fortunately, crooks have no monopoly on ideas. In about 24 hours, the dope seller will be uncovered to us as completely as though he wore a sign which read, I'm the man who sells the dope. And from then on, we should get some action. <laughs> Lad says to me, Uncle, he says, Uncle, will you have another pick me up? And my uncle says, Thank you, I don't care if I do. And the lad said to me, Uncle, he said, Uncle, will you have another pick me up? And my uncle uh, said, Pat, I... does, uh, does that just go on and on and on? No, no, there was there were six pick me ups, and, and I'm on the fourth hey, one wait now. A minute, wait a minute, hold it, hold it, man. There comes another car. Yeah, but my uncle, he'll sober up while we're waiting. I'll have to start all over no, again. No, 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 not yet. Let, let, me, let me look through them glasses for a while. Did you know what you were looking for if you didn't? Sure. I'd be looking for the lad that sells the dope at that joint across the street. Would you know him if you saw him? No. Then you better let me keep the glasses. Okay. And and so the lad says to me, Uncle, he says, Will you have another pick-me-up? And, and me uncle says, Thank you, I don't mind if uh, I do. I'll make and... this the sixth one, Pat. Okay. So my uncle was feeling a little dizzy by this time, you see, and he went out and he got into his boogie and started to drive wait minute, home. Wait a minute, hold and... it. Hold it. The V8 parking across the street and it looks like... Hmm? Yes, Pat. We got him. It's our friend, the dope seller. Oh, and blazes, can you Never tell? Never mind, that's our man. All right, come on. You got that can of oil? Sure, I got it. Okay, here we go. How about me poor uncle? We can't leave him sitting in the tell middle of the road. Tell me way out what happened to him. Yeah, no, all right. Now, the, the constable, you see, he says to him, what's your name? And me uncle says, well, says me uncle, if me name's Michael Gilhooley, I've lost a darn good horse. But if it ain't, I've found a pretty buggy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the car, Pat. You got a good break, too. Another car is parked right behind it. That'll give me a chance to work. Well, make it snappy, Eddie. Suppose that lad in there forgot something and comes out here. Won't take me a second. You stand right here and warn me if you see anyone coming. I'm going to tie this can of oil in here. Mm. Put a cork in the hole in the can. Tie a string to the cork, and there we are. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. There's a pretty spot in Ireland. I've always loved. Oh, that's too high. There's a pretty spot in Ireland. I wa- hurry up, Andy, before I run out of spots here. There's a pretty spot in... Okay, all right, all right. In, uh... That's done. Huh? There's nothing to do but go back to the hotel room across the street and wait until Mr. Dope Seller goes home. Oh, <laughs> Or wherever dope sellers go at this hour of the night. Holy mackerel, Eddie. Why do we have to follow that car on foot? It's much safer, Pat. Suppose we followed in her car, and suddenly we came upon the car we were following. 
It might make him suspicious, and that's the last thing in the world we want to do. He turned this corner, sir. Yeah, there goes the trail of oil. <laughs> they talk about leaving a trail, boy. That's what I call fine. <laughs> I see. I well, only hope he gets where he's going before that oil gives out. Yeah, that's tough stuff. And the way that you, that you tied that can in between the frame, it shouldn't give out until long after my feet do. Listen, for the love of Mike Chitwood, this guy must live in China. You've got some good ideas you have, but my, my feet don't oh, think so. come on. Cheer up, Pat. This looks to me like a great neighborhood for a dope smuggler's hangout. Mm, it sure looks like something. Ramshackle buildings, dark alleys, deserted factories. You know, that oil's getting very thin. Hmm? Mm-hmm. What is it? Turned in this driveway. Don't look. Just keep going straight ahead. Ah, that's nothing but a driveway between two empty buildings. My guess is that somewhere in those empty buildings we'll find some pretty fair living quarters and probably a fortune in dope. Uh, are we going in now? Oh, no. Too near daylight. Mm. Anyhow, we need some of the boys for this job. Yeah, and a couple of machine guns, if you was to ask me. Mm, nothing of the kind. Mm. We're looking for some more important men than we'll find in there. So we'll use brains instead of bullets. Mm. Tomorrow night, we'll come back and put a dictaphone in that place or uh, get shot. One or the other. Yeah, personally, I'm in favor of the dictaphone, a hot foot bath, and a box of corn plasters. Good evening, Miss Blackwell. Good evening. Is Dr. Bruce here? No, not right now. Uh, but he told me to tell you he wanted to see you. He wanted to see me? Yes. And that if you came while he was out, I was to ask you to wait. Just have a chair. Thank you. A magazine? Uh, no. Oh, no, thanks. I'll just wait. Oh, would you excuse me? I have to sterilize some instruments. Of course. So, the doctor's anxious to see me. I suppose he's called Beth's house and consistently received no answer. So, he's curious. Well, you seem to be waiting here. I'll go and sit in the car until I see him come in. Oh. oh. So sorry. Oh, Miss Blackwell, you surprised me. Not leaving, were you? Oh, just for a few minutes. The nurse wasn't sure how soon you'd be back. Seems I've arrived just in time. Uh, be seated a moment, please. I, I'll be right with you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. This is Bruce. That woman you were asking about is in my office now. Yes. Well, what shall I do? Yes, the woman who called herself Blackwell. You'll be right over? Yes. All right. I'll hold her here. Uh, come in, Miss Blackwell. Oh, it really wasn't anything important. If you're busy right now, I think... Oh, no. Wait. No, indeed. There are a number of questions I want to ask you. Come right in and sit down. I want you to make yourself comfortable and feel right at home. Meantime, Chitwood and his companion were listening over a dictograph in an abandoned warehouse near the gang's headquarters. 227 Sherman. Did you get that, Pat? Yes, sir. I got it down here, sir. Uh, say, tell Trick you don't want to see him. Oh, never mind. Wait till I add this column of figures. 259, 15, 20, 28, 30, 30. That means the four hideouts we got, sir. Yeah, and all of them first class apartment houses. Yeah. Jimmy's doing all right. Uh, Jimmy's the guy at the Sherman Avenue apartment. Oh, yeah. Tricky. Do you want him? Oh, yeah. Now, listen, Tricky. Them cellophane capsules ready? Yeah. Yeah, well, from now on, the boys keep a smaller supply on hand, see? And when you deliver the capsules, explain how to use them. They'll fit in the partitions of a regular ice tray. They're waterproof, so all they do is pour water on top of them and freeze them. Swell gag, Squint. You think it up by yourself? Sure. We've got plenty of protection, but if some snoopy narcotic mug gets in any of our joints, he can look till he's blue in the face and never find them. Hello. Yeah? Go ahead, Bruce. There's Bruce. Oh, yeah. Oh, she is, huh? That the dame that told you she was Beth Blackwell? Oh, that's what Cerber is talking about. Yes. Yeah, she... Uh-huh. Well, swell, I'll be right over. Don't let her get away. Holy mackerel. What's she doing in that doctor's office? No talk, Pat. Action, gather up those notes and let's go. Okay. We've got to get the doctor's house ahead of that mob. Come on. <laughs> Heard that, he'll think it's squint. Come on. I'll ring the bell. If they don't answer in about two seconds, we'll kick the door down. Yeah, 
I hope everything's all right, sir. Of course, everything's all right. They're expecting Squid. They're quick. Someone's coming. Oh, good evening. Oh, nice work, Pat. Don't let her go. I won't, I won't. Get him up, Dr. Bruce. Hi, up. Shut up. Sir. Not a word out of you. Get out of here, you. Please. Please don't Get out of here. I said and hurry up. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, Bruce. Into that next room. Now, what's the meaning of no it? No talk. I said move. No, 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 all right. Keep looking straight ahead and put your hands behind you. I'll handcuff you to this cabinet. So make sure you stay put. If you want to move, I'll have to drag this cabinet with you. Make any noise, I'll come back here and shoot you. Police department. The nurse is tied up, Captain. Pat's parking her upstairs. How are you doing? Well, if I can never get the police department on this phone. <laughs> Maybe they don't stay up this late at night. Hello? Hello? Police department? Oh, uh, say, <clears throat> this is Dr. Bruce's residence. Uh, lately, I've been annoyed by a gangster named Squint. Uh, yes, uh, he's been trying to get money from me. Yes, he just phoned me. He was on his way up here now. Well, will you please send me some protection? Oh, please, if you will, in a hurry. I'm afraid he's going to kill me. Nice work, Captain. But why didn't you tell them who you were? <laughs> I'm supposed to be out of town. Somebody might be listening anyway. We'll take the back way out to avoid any chance of running into Squint or the police. Come on, let's get out of here. Bruce, what? Oh, oh, there you are. Yes, here I am. Well, where's the dame you were telling me about? Uh, she's she's gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Uh, Squint, you've got to believe me. She was sitting here with me when a man entered, wearing a mask. I couldn't see his face. He forced me into my laboratory here, handcuffed me to this cabinet. Well, you ain't been sniffing that stuff yourself, have you? It's the truth. Then, just before you came in, both of them ran off. Now, wait a minute, Bruce. You're drunk or something. I might go for the first part of your story, but that running out stuff. Uh, put him up, Squint. Huh? We've got to cover it plenty. Oh, yeah, what are you doing here? Are uh, you Dr. Bruce? Yes, all right. You the man that phoned police headquarters? A gangster named Squint was bothering you? Huh? Well, he won't bother you anymore for a while. Oh, you dirty double-crossing rat, so that's how it is, Back is it? down, Squint. You don't mean nothing to me, cop. I'll be out in a half an hour. But you, brother... Come on, save your breath. You'll need it. You know, Madge, Eddie just about gave me heart failure by not telling me you was going to that Bruce guy's house. <laughs> well, that's just an oversight, I assure you. You were eight <laughs> seconds late, Eddie. You told me if you weren't there in 13 minutes, I was to go. And you arrived in 13 minutes and eight seconds. <laughs> you know, you took an awful chance, Eddie. Uh, supposing, supposing that doctor called some other gang. In that case, poor Dr. Bruce would have been compelled to let me out or I would have obeyed his Eddie's orders and shot one of his ears off. Which ear? Uh, the one in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, about now, if our plan worked out all right, Dr. Bruce and Squint are on their way to jail. What's on the program now, Captain? We're going back to their headquarters where I have a little job to do. Then you've got to get on the DA's trail and stick right to him until we find out who gets Squint out of jail. The man that does that will be worth our time and attention. Oh, it'll probably be some crooked lawyer who'll never let anybody know the man behind it. In that case, I have another plan. A general roundup will come sometime tomorrow. Then the next stop is the warehouse. That's right. Next stop is the warehouse. Uh, turn on the dictaphone, Pat. Hmm? Let's see if there's any sign of life in there. No, okay. No, it doesn't seem to me. I've never heard one of these things operate. Now listen. No, nobody home, I guess. Well... Might as well be now as any time. That gang that went with Squint is liable to be back any minute. Pat, you cover the front of the building. Okay. Madge, watch the rear. I'm going in and see if Squint left his payoff money here. Do you think it's safe to go alone, Eddie? Much safer than leaving part of this building uncovered. Well, let's go and get it over with. Chitwood, I have called to congratulate you and congratulate the police department upon the successful roundup of that gang of dope peddlers. Well, thank you, Mr. Britton. That speech you made at the banquet certainly was an inspiration to me. I am very happy. The other members of the League join me in extending our best wishes. But uh, have you sufficient evidence to successfully prosecute those men? Oh, yes. Yes, plenty of evidence, Mr. Britton. That's very good. Very good indeed. I've heard it said that it was very difficult to prove anything against that type of criminal. Oh, it has been at times, uh, principally because some person of position has been accepting money from them for protection. That is what I would call positively outrageous. Uh, how did you find out so much about them, Captain Chitwood? How were you able to make such a complete roundup? Well, it started when we discovered dope was being sold at the 810 nightclub. Although no one saw the man who sold it, uh, one of my detectives made a payment with a $5 bill. 
which had been treated with a violent irritant. A violent irritant? Yes, bacteria, in other words. The dope seller showed up the following night with a bandaged hand. By following him, my agent learned a sum of money was to be paid to the man who was giving them protection. Beautiful work, Jim. My agent then put a package of the chemically treated money in place of the money Squint had prepared for payment. Yes? By now, the uh, man who received that money has a slight irritation on his hands. Within 24 hours, it'll be absorbed by the bloodstream. In seven days, unless he can discover the proper method of counteracting it, it'll mean death. Death? Yes, Mr. Britton. Death. Death? In seven days? In seven days. Oh, I see you're scratching your hand, Mr. Britton. If your hands itch now, think what it'll be when the poison goes through your entire system. You're kidding. Oh, you think so? Take a look at your hands, Britton. You can't get away with this. It's murder. What was that squint pulled on one of our men? I didn't have anything to do with that. That's your story? But we think we can prove you didn't. Anyway, that's the charge. Let's see you spring yourself out of that one. In just a moment, we shall again hear Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are not engaged in the hazardous profession of tracking down dope peddlers or other dangerous criminals, but the pursuit of business or pleasure also is exacting. Punctuality. Maximum performance and minimum cost are demanded by the motoring legions, and tens of thousands are getting exactly that with celebrated Rio Grande Cracked. The gasoline that powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other public serving equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. Rio Grande Cracked, gasoline used by your California state and United States officials to power their emergency automotive equipment. Yes, friends, you may not realize it, but your motor is at all times aware of and benefits by the equal to any emergency qualities of this superior gasoline. A quicker start, greater power, maximum speed, and real money-saving economy. All these are wrapped up in the matchless police car performance of Rio Grande Cracked, the gasoline most highly recommended by those who drive the most. Drive into the nearest red and white Rio Grande station in the morning. Take aboard a tank full of Rio Grande Cracked, and you too will begin enjoying the benefits of this noted police car performance gasoline. And now, Chief Davis. Britain was deceived by Chitwood's bluff. The fear of death unnerved him. It was impossible to prove Britain's connection with the murder of the undercover operator. But he was tried and sentenced for his part in the dope-selling racket, as was the doctor and the other men involved. All are now learning to their sorrow that crime does not pay. Thank you, Chief Davis. <laughs> Sunday's police calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation of broadcast 236 regarding a narcotic charge. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rolls and questions. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. (laughs) 